everyone. My name is Erica. I'm the National Nurse Manager at Lymphoma Australia and thank you for joining us for the session today on coaching and goal setting. Um, this is actually part two in this series but it, don't stress if you missed the first session you'll still get quite a lot from uh, from this session and during the sessions they're recorded as well too and then also uploaded to our YouTube channel if you wanted to catch them afterwards you can just hop on to YouTube and search Lymphoma Australia and you'll be able to find all of our recorded sessions. There's many, many, many of them. So um, just have a look there if you missed the first session and want to catch it. So I wanted to start out by saying um, that at Lymphoma Australia, we have a lot of support available to help patients, carers and anyone impacted by lymphoma. We recognise that a diagnosis of lymphoma can cause a lot of uncertainty and you can feel out of control or even like your world has been flipped, up, flipped upside down. And it doesn't necessarily happen just at diagnosis. It can happen the whole way through. It can happen when you're on watch and wait. Um, it can happen as a carer as well too. So there, there's not one one way to manage all of this and to, and to face this sort of diagnosis as well too. So unfortunately, sometimes the support that you need to help manage or um, work through this sort of medical upheaval can um, can be really difficult to find as well too. So that's why um, we have supports available to help you connect um, and to help you try and navigate the chaos as well too. So a lot of these supports are available through our website or you can call our nursing staff as well too and we can point you in the right direction as well too because we have a nursing hotline as well too. But our, um, so today our coaching and goal setting session is with Carol. Carol is our national um, lymphoma coach um, and she'll be taking us through the session. Carol has been mentoring and coaching for two decades and she's a lymphoma survivor and a volunteer with Lymphoma Australia. So you can also access um, Carol as well too for additional support services as well too if, if need be. And I'll show you at the end how to do that. So Carol understands your experience and will help you to provide to find your direction amongst the chaos. Carol will provide caring guidance and support to you, and that's evident through some of the wonderful testimonials that we've had come through from patients that she's been helping. So I will stop talking now because you're all here to actually see Carol, um, and I'll jump off screen and go on mute, and I'll hand over to Carol. Thanks, Carol. Thank you so much for a lovely introduction. Very, very gracious of you, Erica. And welcome to everyone today to our session two of our goal setting. I'm delighted to meet you, albeit in cyber, and we're going to work together uh, probably for the next 45 minutes to an hour. What you're going to need is pen and paper because there are exercises that we're going to do together. It's not going to be just me talking. It's a lot of today is going to be all about you and what you can get from our session. So please, if you don't have pen and paper while I'm sharing the screen, do go and get it and get some water and anything that will keep you nice and comfortable for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you. All right, I'm, I'm not too sure if my screen has um, gone into view mode, so I might just stop sharing it and start again, if that's okay with everyone. Give me a moment, don't you love technology? It doesn't always behave the way you want it to and when you want it to. And um, that, that's the joy of life, I guess. So um, I'll try and share the screen again and see what we can do. All right, um, let me just share this and see how we go. Okay, Erica, um, if uh, it's not actually the full screen, do let me know, but I think we should be okay with it as it is here. So today we're starting with goals and we're going to be looking at our thoughts and putting that under the microscope ensuring that we do think about what our thoughts 
are doing to us. Every goal starts with a thought, which generates into a word, becomes a sentence, becomes our goal, and then the action. So that's the process that we're going to follow today. And while last time many of us spent quite a bit of time putting our thoughts under the microscope, even if you didn't attend the session, it really doesn't matter. You'll get maximum benefit from today. So today is all about success, your success and the story you're going to tell that's going to make you successful. And it is idiosyncratic to you. What is success for you is very different from what success is for anyone else. And it's the relationship that we have with ourselves. It's our thoughts that seed and nourish and grow and flow and allow us to feel so indulged. And if the thoughts are negative, unfortunately, we wilt and we go down a path that really does not serve us. So we want to go on the path that is nourishing and brings the lights on. What success is for you is unique to what success is for me and for anyone else that you know. In life, there is no meaning except the meaning you choose to give it. What meaning are you choosing to give to how you see success? It is all about you and how you give meaning to your thoughts. Now, what I would like you to do is to just spend a moment having a look at what's really inside you, what meanings you are giving to life. And I'd like you to just jot down a word or two that really explains what it is that you are actually giving meaning to something. So the word could be success, it could be nourishment, it could be um, uh, self-indulgence or self-care. Write the word down and I'll give you a moment to just note down what that means for you. Just one word and what it means for you. The word and its meaning for you. That gives you an opportunity to really eavesdrop on your thoughts. For example, having a look at the word and the meaning you wrote down. If, for example, you wrote the word self-care, for some people, they would see that as very selfish. You're putting yourself first and you're being very indulgent. For others, the meaning of self-care is not being selfish. It's loving yourself, taking care of yourself, and making you happy and a priority, which is really a necessity. Because if you are cared for, then you have all the energy to care for others, to give to others, because you are overflowing with the ability to give, just like putting the oxygen mask on first. So if you're on for the journey, and I know that you are because you're here today, and we're going to give 100% of ourselves to creating the life that we deserve, then please come on this journey with me and dream big. Set goals and take action. Dream big doesn't mean beyond your capability. It means all that you can be and more. We'll start the exercise, and this I'll call exercise one just for reference as our values exercise. And I want to give you a minute or two to just think in keywords of one or two values that 
you care the most about. Don't overthink it. One or two. For example, if you value the potential to serve, because that is your need, your need to give back a need for significance, and you really value giving back to others, then using the technique called the SMART goal technique, we will write up a goal in relation to that value. So I value, for example, the potential to serve. And using the SMART technique, meaning that my goal will be specific, measurable, attainable, real, and it will be done in a timely way. Specific, that we know exactly what I'm going to do. Measurable, that we can measure and give a tick that we've attained it. Attainable, being within our power. For example, that we have the skills to do it. And realistic is that we perhaps have a time frame that is realistic. And then we'll timely achieve it because we'll know exactly when it's been achieved. So here's an example of where we note down and appreciate what our goal is. So I'm going to give you a moment based on your value to write down what your goal is using the SMART technique. Write it as being specific, measurable and timely. So here's an example of my value written in a SMART goal format. By the end of next month, I would have applied for four volunteering roles in my local community by researching opportunities through my local council. That's using the SMART technique based on my value. My value is a value to serve. So is it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and timely. Yes, by the end of the month, so I know when it's going to happen. And I can measure it because I'm asking for four volunteer roles that will be applied for and responded to. Where is it going to be specifically? It will be through my local council and its roles in my local community. So I've addressed all four dimensions of the SMART goal. Have a look at yours, and it's our first one that we've written down. If you don't tick all the boxes of this S being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, it's okay. We'll have a number of goes of writing the goals. I just want you to get a feel of it, first of all, before we move on. So, Let's come back to your values. And I'd like you to spend just a little while having a look at the values that you can jot down. Only five of them, don't go for more, that you use as a rudder for your life. It may be you value communication, honesty, integrity, care for others, respect, openness, whatever it is. Jot it down.
only five. Okay, doesn't matter that they don't have to be in a specific order, but they're going to help us with our next exercise. The next exercise will look at your purpose and your vision, because they are in fact, again, a little deeper than values, a little deeper, but they are the backbone of the goals we're going to write today. It's to have more purpose and meaning in life. And when our goals align with our purpose and our vision, then we are in flow. So for example, you may be here at the moment in terms of your life, life experiences and life expectations. And way, way out there is your vision. And for you, it's important to be noting down your goals to achieve that vision. However, even more important is that to reach the vision, we need to take baby steps one at a time. The steps are based on what your purpose in life is and what your vision. If it's not embedded into your purpose, vision and values, your goal is not attainable. Wow, how many of us have written goals and not achieved it? And it really comes down to how many of us have focused our goal on our purpose and our vision. That's the secret to success. So for example, if you value good health, then your purpose is to become healthy. So I'd like you now to write down, what do you value based on the values that you noted down a little earlier? I asked you to note down just five, I asked you to consider your purpose and vision. So with baby steps, let's start. If you value good health, then your purpose in life is to become healthy. Can you please write down your value, just one of them, one of the five that you noted down, and what is your purpose based on that value? I'll give you a minute or two to do it. What is your value and what is your purpose? Now what I'd like you to do is to try to write yet another objective. This is the second go that you're having. So don't expect it to be perfect at the second go either, but have a go, that's successful. So based on what you value and your purpose. Can you write just one goal using the SMART technique that will bring you closer to being healthy in this example, being closer to the purpose you wrote down based on your value? Is it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely? Write down your goal.
if you're getting stuck, go back to what do you value and what is your purpose? And now write your goal. Look at your goal now and ask yourself, is it specific? Do you know exactly what you're going to be doing? Is it measurable? Do you know when you will have reached that goal? Is it in your power to accomplish it? Do you have the skills and capabilities and resources? Is it realistic? Have you given yourself enough time and space? to achieve that goal? And what have you had to do to make and create that space? And is it timely? Do you know exactly when you want to accomplish it? Now I want you to have a second go. And this time, based on what your purpose is, the purpose in this example is to become healthy. We're going to write another objective in that regard. I want you to have a think, do a little mind map on all the things you're going to need to get to be healthy. The things you need to do, the need, things you need to get, the things you need to forage for, you have to access. What is it that you need to do? In this case, we're wanting a healthy lifestyle. So we may do a mind map of making sure that we have access to organic food, breathing clean air, juicing every day and drinking wonderful purified water, getting some exercise and playing sports that nourish us, ensuring we get enough sleep. These are all the resources we're going to need for a healthy lifestyle and put it out into a mind map so that it's in a visual form and something that makes it easy to cherry pick from. And I'll give you two minutes to do that as well. What are the resources that you need? Where are you going to access them? What are the tips you need to consider to achieve that wonderful vision that you have for yourself based on your values? What are they? Do a mind map, note them down and let those creative juices flow. So in this example, we said we valued good health and our purpose was to become healthy. And we noted down, we had a second go at noting down a goal. And now I've asked you to go a little bit deeper and refine that goal by looking at all the tips that you can find for leading a healthy life. And now what I'm wanting you to do is to write that goal again and see 
what comes out. See if it's a bit sharper. Spend just a minute or two using the SMART technique based on the tips, resources, and what you need to do to create that beautiful vision for yourself. Rewrite that goal. using all the tips, resources, whatever you foraged for, bring it to life. So here's an example that you could have written. By the end of this year, in eight weeks time, I will be walking 10,000 steps per day along the beachfronts or the botanic gardens with my dog at sunset, irrespective of the weather. It is specific because you know exactly where I'll be walking, who I'll be walking with, when I'll be walking, how many steps I'm going to be taking. It's measurable because we've articulated 10,000 steps per day. We've given it a time frame. We're saying it's within an eight-week period by the end of this year. And we know that that's attainable because of our capabilities in walking and our willpower and our vision for ourselves. So we have met all of the four dimensions of the SMART goal writing technique. Have a look at your goal and tick each time you have found where you have written S specific, put an S down. Is it measurable? 10,000 steps, put an M down. Is it attainable? Along the beachfront or the botanic gardens and it's just a car drive away, so it's certainly attainable. Is it realistic? The next eight weeks, by the end of the year? Yes, it's realistic. And is it timely? When exactly? We said by the end of the year, so you can put a T down. Have a look at yours. Can you put your S-M-A-R-T overlaid on your goal? If not, that's okay. We're going to practice a little further. And each time we do it, you'll get sharper and sharper. Take your time. Take a deep breath. It's okay. So let's come back to those wonderful values that we've been speaking about. If you are clear on your values, then you know what drives you with your goals. And that's why it's so important to have those values that you noted down, the five that you chose, top of mind. Keep them in your visual field. Have them next to your bed, on the screen, when you're on screen time, when you're brushing your teeth, have it plastered on a yellow bitty bit onto your mirror and have it embedded into your mind's eye each day. 
because that is the beacon of hope. Your values will drive beautiful, beautiful objectives and goals for you to achieve your life's purpose. Because when you are leading your life on purpose, you're in flow and everything feels so effortless. It's so beautiful to be in that space. And that's where I know your success is. That's your sweet spot. It is interesting, though, that when we move away from what we don't want, so if we don't want an unhealthy lifestyle, if we don't want toxic relationships, if we don't want to be a couch potato, and we know what we don't want, that's a gift because it propels us in the direction to find what we do want. We need clarity on what's not serving us any longer. What we're doing that's costing us unnecessarily, that's eroding our emotions and depleting everything that we know we can do. It's taking it all away from us. So what is it that we don't want? And what are the goals you're going to write down that will propel you in the direction to find what you do want? And what you want is based on your values. So if you're a bit concerned about finding what your life's purpose is, spend a moment going back to those beautiful values and have a look at them. It may be fulfillment, peace, happiness, joy, whatever values that you have written down, go back to them and just have a read of each one really out loud so that it reverberates throughout your whole body. You do that. Now that you've heard your values again, I want you to do another exercise, please. And this time, I want you to make a decision on whether you want to glow, that's in the orange color, or you want to grow, which is in the green color. Let's stay with glow for the moment. That is for those of us that are very happy with where we are now. And we do feel we're on life's purpose, but we just need to sharpen it up a little bit, make it a little bit more brilliant. Just extend it that one step further to bring the glow. So any one of these questions I would like you to answer, to be in glow and just note down only a few words for each that you feel is applicable to you. Ideally, choose one. First of all, what are you most proud of? Or, what was your favorite lesson and why? Or, you may note down, what did you work for? Or, what did you get better at in life? Just one of them. Write down your answer to stay in glow. Any of those questions in orange, staying in glow, write down your answer.
And now, let's move to another dimension, that of grow. If you're not wanting to work on glow where you are now and sharpening it up, but perhaps you want to work on some form of growth, then you'll answer the green questions that we have on the grow side. Any one of the four, what do you want to work on? How do you want to improve? Or what is your new goal? Or something that you think you want to be or get better at? Any one of those four, write it down. So just to come back, what is it that you want to glow at or grow at? Answer any one of these questions because they are going to be the springboard for you to write your next SMART goal. Practicing again. Let's have a go. So based on either glow or grow and using the SMART goal technique, please write down your next SMART goal using the S specific, M for measurable, A for attainment, R for realistic and T for timely, all four dimensions, uh, beg your pardon, all five dimensions. So based on glow or grow, you're writing your next objective. Take your time, don't rush it. Based on your values and your purpose, you want to glow or grow? All right, now looking at the objective that you wrote down, I'd like you to extrapolate from that a couple of interesting notions. First of all, I want us to assess that objective that you wrote down. So is it specific? Put a tick if it is. Does it target a specific area for improvement? If so, give it a tick. Is it measurable? How are you measuring your success? Did you write it down? Give it a tick. Is it achievable? Will you reach it? 
give it a tick. And is it realistic? Will you be able to achieve it? And is it time related? When will you achieve it by? If you have five ticks, wow, well done to you. You're a very fast learner. For most of us, you probably would have got three and I'm just so proud of you. You're on the journey. Well done. So there are a couple of points I would like to mention to you about goal setting that is really important for us to consider. Throughout many of our lives and for most of us, we have written goals and never really achieved them. And it comes down to one practice that many of us have done that does not serve us. And as you can see in front of you, there's a cluttered board of ideas. And that clutter is in fact the stumbling block that's sabotaging us from achieving goals because we're so busy thinking of the goals, what we're going to do today, what we're going to do this week, how we're going to do it, what we'll do by uh, mid-year, what we're going to do in 30 days time, and, 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 and. It just clutters and overwhelms us and we just throw our hands up in the air and say, whoa, this is all too much for us. We have good intentions. We've embedded it with good values and it's aligned with our purpose, but we've gone into overload. And what we're going to ask you to do is please only go one step at a time. Write down with a clear head, one very clear objective using the SMART technique. That's all. That's what's going to get you success. It's a baby step at a time, one goal over a period of time, and then slowly build the momentum for yet another goal. And let there be a long pause between each of them to savor your achievements and to take the time for it to be considered based on what you value and what your purpose is in life. Please do not allow yourselves to be overwhelmed with this clutter. We can't process it and it's not achievable and it really doesn't serve us. So the more concise, the more clear you are. So clarity is your friend. And the less clutter you have, the better chance you are to achieve your goal. So coming back to our SMART goal, we're going to do another exercise. And this time, we're going to remind ourselves that we are human and we will all have a few setbacks. That's the natural order of life. But it depends on the meaning that we give to setbacks. Remember that we started today's session, we said nothing has meaning except the meaning you choose to give it. So if we see problems or setbacks as just stop signs and guidelines that help us to get back on the bicycle when we have fallen off, you will achieve your objectives because they will come a time, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, there will come a time where there will be a roadblock. And it depends on the way you see ahead of that roadblock, being able to break through and achieve that goal. That's up to you. So clarity gives us the opportunity to live our best life because we have clarity to see our values. Keep your values top of mind. Have them visible. 
That's the clarity we're talking about. Coming back to setting our goals, it is really important to have that all-encompassing, amazing, big goal that you're wanting to achieve. Yes, it is a little bit of a stretch, but it is okay to splash through the puddle rather than going around it. Be you. Be who you are. How many of us step over the puddle or around it because we don't want to get a little bit splashed? We haven't experienced all that life has to offer when we don't stretch ourselves. So look at the goal that you have written down today, maybe the first one or the third one that you wrote down, and ask yourself, have you stretched yourself to everything that you can be and more? Go back and have a look. Yes, you may have achieved a smart goal, but have you stretched yourself? Choose any one of them and rewrite it as a stretch goal this time. Be brave, be courageous. You can do it. Any one of them that you've written down. Just a little stretch. Now have a look at that goal. It is important to remember that what you focus on is what you get. What you focus on is what you get. So if you focused on your values, for example, courage, reliability, integrity, connecting, whatever beautiful values you have noted down, that's what you are going to get. Because the law of attraction tells us that what you focus on, you will get. Even if you're not consciously aware of it, your subconscious is driving you towards that goal. So please put your values under the microscope. Sanitize them in a way that honors you and allows you to lead your best life. Then you will create that all-inspiring, awesome goal that will bring you everything that you deserve and more. So as we finish up today, the last part of our session, we're going to scrutinize your goals. So I want you to choose any one of the goals that you wrote down. Maybe the first one that you had a go. Maybe the last one, that's your stretch one. But just choose one for the purpose of this exercise. And let's have fun with it. Let's scrutinize it. And let's have a sense of humor because we have to get out of our own way. We very often are the ones that need to move out and allow the real you to shine. Get out of your own way. So answer this question really carefully as I ask it. Based on the goal that you wrote, which is embedded in your values and your life purpose, will being, doing, or having this goal develop areas in your life that are really important to you? Yes or no? Will being, doing, or having this goal develop areas in your life that are really important to you? Yes or no? It'll give you great insight into your purpose. Yes or no, that's as simple as that. 
Second question, would it make you a happier person? Yes or no? Not if, not maybe, just a yes or no. And would it improve your situation, whatever situation you are in right now in life? Because we're all in it together and we all have our own little situations. Sometimes they're bigger than we want them to be. So will this goal improve your situation? Yes or no? And the last question is the most important one. Will your goal improve your relationship with yourself? Remember when we started, I said success depends on the relationship you have with yourself. Will the goal that you noted down improve the relationship you have with yourself? Yes or no? Now, if you've said yes to all the questions that we've asked in scrutinizing the objective that you chose, well done to you. But I can assure you that for most of us, it's probably going to be 50-50. And that is okay. It just means that I want you to go back and look at your goal and look at it in terms of writing it so that it makes you feel as though you are developing in areas of your life that's important to you. Rewrite the goal to make sure that it makes you a happier person and it improves your situation and it improves the relationship you have with yourself. Go ahead and do that. Develop areas that are important to you. Make you a happier person and improve your situation. And improve your relationship with yourself. Okay. And that concludes our session. So thank you for attending today. Please do make things happen for yourself. And I thank you for your time and wish you all the joy in the world that you deserve. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.